So, uh, my name is Matthijs de Schipper. I'm indeed a research scientist at TNO, which is the uh, Netherlands organization for scientific research. And we're a contract research organization. Um, and we are based in, uh, in Eindhoven. Our department is focused on 3D, 3D food and pharma printing. And we've already been working on 3D food printing for about uh, 10 years. Um, and what you see here is one of the very first things we did uh, a long time ago, uh, um, a 3D chocolate powder printing with, uh, with laser sintering. Um, and today I'm going to talk about uh, our use case for uh, personalization and uh, a case we, um, a project we done for the Dutch Ministry of Defense. And the goal here was to investigate the potential of 3D food printing. And this was a project we did as the Digital Food Processing Initiative, which is a collaboration with, uh, uh, of uh, University Wageningen, uh, Wageningen Research, TNO, and uh, TUE University of Eindhoven. And we did this project together with Wageningen University and Research. And the goal was so to investigate what the potential was for uh, 3D food printing for the army and uh, to see well, how we can achieve real personalization. And the, um, um, the challenge for Wageningen was mostly on how to formulate different snacks to print that would fit with the wide range of nutritional requirements for personalized nutrition. And for us, for TNO, the challenge was how to provide personalized nutrition at a large scale relevant for the army. So not one product at a time, but how could we feed an army? So um, what's the methodology we used? First, we did some brainstorm sessions with expert users to define different use cases uh, within many different branches of the Dutch military. Uh, we focused on formulation of snacks that fit with the desired nutritional profile based on what the specific use cases were. Uh, we worked uh, different 3D printing concepts with enough flexibility to produce personalized products. And uh, we defined uh, gaps uh, which are required for a realization and implementation of, of, of this technology. So what do we need to develop? So um, what is the use case of uh, 3D printing uh, for the Dutch uh, army? It's a 3D printing in um, um, really in the field uh, with the goal of improving performance uh, before, during and after exercise. So um, uh, soldiers, uh, based on uh, what they need to do, if they need to, to walk to, um, uh, to a jungle, if they need to do sharpshooting, um, or if they drive a truck, they all have different uh, nutritional needs. And these nutritional needs also differ before you do a an, an hefty exercise or um, when you're recovering, when you come back from uh, deployment. So uh, the goal was how can we make different uh, food snacks as an um, addition to the normal um, uh, supplied food uh, to compensate for these uh, fluctuations in nutritional requirements. And the goal was to, um, to pr really produce um, um, these type of products in a mobile satellite kitchen, which is something the Dutch army uses, which is a, a kitchen which can be uh, really uh, positioned really close to, um, to, the, um, uh, to the battlefront, so to say. And the relevant production scale was about 100 products per hour, which could be ordered shortly in advance uh, with an app. Uh, and here on the left at the bottom, you can see what a, such a nutritional requirement would look like. You would have uh, the amount of uh, calories there. You have the ratio of macronutrients between protein, fats, and carbohydrates. Uh, maybe different type of protein, um, um, uh, what type of ratio on uh, carbohydrates you want, and uh, what possible micronutrients you need to add for additional performance. So we also did a, a test study to study the acceptance uh, of uh, 3D food printing at the Army, which was done by Wageningen University by uh, Sophie Collier. Um, and the focus of this test was, uh, are people in the army really 
are they accepting uh, 3D food printing? What is the desired level of personalization? And what should the nutritional content be of, of these type of snacks? So we focused on uh, 3D printed pastry chef uh, snacks, which consisted of uh, dough and two types of, of filling. And here you see how the consumer study was laid out. We had um, first um, week, we had them uh, tasting a reference uh, biscuit. Um, then the second week, they can make one choice. What uh, type of texture uh, would you like? Either soft, like a sort of cake texture or crunchy, um, like a, a really cookie texture. On week three, we uh, add another choice level. So they could uh, choose either texture, uh, they could use the texture and the taste, sweet or savory. And in the fourth week, they had um, many ingredients which they could choose from. So they had uh, eight sweet options and uh, four savory options. So there was a lot to choose from um, uh, in the, uh, during the fourth week. Mm. And some of the highlights of this uh, consumer study are, you can read actually, it's, uh, this study is also published in the paper, which is uh, put here on the slide if you want to read more about it. Um, but what was most uh, Im uh, important um, was the amount of variation that was offered. So they would really want to have a choice um, um, uh, what, what type of products they wanted uh, to, uh, um, to eat. Uh, but furthermore, um, the most important for these people in the army the, so, um, was the nutritional profile. They really wanted to perform and they re really wanted to get the best nutrition possible in order to perform the best. So the, um, the shape of the product or the portion size were less relevant as long as it had the right nutrients. Um, and uh, the sensory profile was a bit in the, uh, and taste was a bit in the middle. Um, so how do we fit these varying nutritional requirements while using the same base materials? Um, how do we fit these type of things? Um, so um, uh, this is a kind of complicated graph, but I'll walk you through it. Um, so here we have a, a tertiary graph, which shows the fat, the carbohydrates and the proteins, uh, which is the, um, um, the energy ratio in, in, uh, in, in percentages. And um, ideally you would like to have your snack to have um, a, percent, um, uh, a point here on this graph, which has the right uh, ratio of macronutrients. So that was the goal to how to achieve that. And what you see uh, there in the, the light brown, you see actually where the uh, macronutrient uh, um, uh, composition is of our 3D printing cookie dough, where we make the snack of. So if you only print the dough, you only can use one point on this graph. So we need to combine it with additional ingredients in order to shift um, this, um, um, this position to the desired nutritional uh, profile. So uh, you have the yellow square you can see uh, there, or it's a, a polygon actually. Um, that's when you add either nut spreads, dairy fillings, or jam to this, um, to this um, uh, cookie dough and in different ratios um, because you have um, uh, you have your dough and you can vary the ratio of each ingredient and also vary the ratio between how much dough you want and how much filling you want and then you get the whole ye yellow square and within uh, this square you would have your uh, desired uh, um, um, uh, snack so to say and uh, still at that, uh, at the, around the area where you actually want the macronutrient uh, ratio, there are still some possibilities with either more nut spread, more dairy filling or more jam or different dose. Um, so the idea is that um, you use a uh, computer algorithm to calculate all the possible snacks that you can make with the base ingredients. And then you filter out all the snacks that, uh, that comply, so to say, with the nutritional uh, requirements. And you feed all those, um, uh, those snacks as a choice to the user. So we can have, have the feeling of personalization um, while still fitting uh, the nutritional requirements for optimal performance. 
So uh, in order to do this, uh, you, we need to produce multiple snacks, uh, 100 per hour. So we need to make this possible. And one thing to do that is to simplify uh, the designs while still offering the amount of variation and complexity we actually need. So uh, what we did here is, is to make a set of modular designs um, uh, of snacks which can be produced. And by uh, changing the, uh, uh, the ratio between dough and filling and changing the ratio of how much is each snack filled or how many layers of dough are, printing, are printed, you can create a wide variety of um, dough filling ratios and thus uh, allowing you to uh, print a lot of snacks. Uh, what you have to do is during production is to group designs based on similar characteristics in order to be as efficient as possible. And there is a limited range of dough filling um, uh, possible. So you cannot make everything with this machine. Um, so what, uh, what does this bring you if you simplify it like this, is that you can make snacks in batches of 12, uh, 12 a piece. All the snacks share the same base design and you can number, uh, reduce the number of X, Y, Z axis to a single system uh, in order to produce. Otherwise, if you need to make 12 per slice snacks uh, at the same time, and each have a different pattern, you also need 12 X, Y, Z systems, which gets really complicated. And if something breaks in the field, one motor uh, breaks in the field, if you're in the middle of desert, you don't want to re uh, replace stepper motors all the time. So simplifying this is important in case uh, for the army uh, to have a robust system to work with. Another point is that you need to supply material in bulk. Um, you don't have the time to uh, shuffle around 12 cartridges every 10 minutes. Um, um, you simply want to feed a big bucket of material in the 3D printer and print with it. So the layout is more or less, you have a material in feed which feeds to either the extruder or progressive cavity pump or anything that in a regular large food system pumps material through piping. And by controlling valves at, at the nozzles, you can determine exactly the ratio um, of how much dough is printed at the same time or when one nozzle needs to stop or not. Um, Further, um, there's uh, complexity and additional variety. In order to offer enough variety, it's important to consider the value of each added filling. Uh, further research is, is needed to really estimate how much variety do you need to really get the feeling of, okay, I have enough to choose from. Do I need four fillings or five fillings? Um, because you need to consider that each filling um, adds additional stream of material. You don't want them uh, to mix um, because that uh, makes it more difficult uh, when you want to clean and really produce. Um, so you want to separate these streams of material, but, uh, but that also means that you need to duplicate these. Um, it's easy to implement more micronutrients compared to more fillings because they're bulkier, require more pumps, more fillings or more robot arms to really uh, control this system. So when you start designing a personalized um, a nutrition machine, so to say, um, it's good to consider how many base elements do you need in order to satisfy the customer. So what uh, does this production method look like in, uh, in practice? Here you see one of our, de uh, our developments in which we use a bulk feed method to um, uh, produce these snacks. So we can uh, print with uh, up to um, uh, 10, 20 or 30 or 40 nozzles, uh, depending on uh, different parts we choose in the system. Um, and you can either produce with one nozzle um, um, uh, per object, or you can choose to use, uh, in this case, what is it, two, four, uh, about eight nozzles for the same object. So this system allows you to really produce large quantities of food material and pr really print in parallel with only one bulk supply of material. So really scale up food production to the necessary levels of the requirements of uh, the US, of uh, the Dutch army. So here you see a video of this technology. Um, you see here um, the biscuits are uh, getting printed. And we use, uh, in this case, we use one um, material supply, which you see in the form of the syringe here at the top. 
And at the end, um, you can also use uh, multiple materials at the same time uh, to get each get their, uh, their own uh, nozzle. Um, so this system can be used for either single or multi-material. That does, that does not really matter. But we see this type of, of, of uh, equipment uh, useful to produce small quantities uh, of, of really serious production where you need high volumes. So in general, uh, the most important aspects, um, consider the complexity of the machine while still offering the full range of personalization and uh, choose uh, as few moving parts as possible. Um, uh, when you have a large scale production, 100 products per hour, use bulk feed to supply the machine and do not automate everything uh, to reduce complexity. For the army, we considered automating everything, but in the end, um, the concept is much easier when you take one tray of finished products and put them in an oven uh, in the same machine than if you have a robot arm exchanging these plates. So um, we're also working now on a consortium project to continue this development. Um, so a consortium project uh, about personalized nutrition and we aim to deliver personalized food into consumers daily life by connecting personal data and digital production technology. This allowing consumers to be at their best. And we as uh, TNO and Wageningen, we focus on food science. We at TNO focus also on uh, big data. Uh, we have experience with consumer research and we have experience with new equipment development. Um, so uh, we think that within this uh, consortium, we're more than able to help uh, you and different companies to really bring personalized nutrition um, uh, to the market. And for this consortium project, we're looking into uh, developing a uh, vending machine for personalized nutrition with use cases for the military, uh, sports, uh, care, uh, care personnel in, um, in hospitals and various patients group with um, different things as uh, improving well-being, chewing problems or weight management. So if you're interested, please contact me, um, send me an email or, uh, or let me know or uh, use this email uh, on this slide. Thank you for your attention.